Ever wonder why pirates are always tied to tales of hidden treasure and shadowy secrets? The allure of pirates is as deep as the sea itself, steeped in tales of hidden treasures and shadowy secrets. These maritime marauders with their iconic skull and crossbones have been romanticized and vilified in equal measure, leaving behind a legacy shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Take the infamous Edward Teach, better known as Blackbeard, for instance. His name alone evokes images of a fearsome figure with a wild beard, his face wreathed in smoke from the slow-burning fuses tucked beneath his hat. Blackbeard's reign of terror on the high seas was brief but dramatic, with tales of his exploits spreading far and wide. Yet it's the legend of Blackbeard's hidden treasure that continues to captivate our imagination. Despite extensive searches, no one has ever found a single doubloon, adding another layer of mystery to his already enigmatic persona. Then there's Captain William Kidd, a man who straddled the line between pirate and privateer. Kidd's story is one of ambition, betrayal, and a treasure that sparked countless legends. After being convicted of piracy and sentenced to hang in the year 1701, Kidd left behind a tantalizing clue. He claimed to have buried a massive treasure somewhere, a fortune in gold and jewels that's never been found. These stories and countless others like them have cemented the link between pirates and hidden treasure, creating an irresistible allure. The promise of untold riches, the thrill of the hunt, the lure of a mystery unsolved. These are the things that keep us enthralled by pirates centuries after the last pirate ship disappeared over the horizon. And it's not just about the gold. These were men and women who lived outside the law, who dared to defy empires and chart their own course. Their legends are a potent mix of rebellion, adventure, and the eternal human yearning for freedom and fortune. So buckle up, mateys. We're about to embark on a thrilling voyage through the annals of pirate history. But were all pirates really as ruthless and greedy as the legends portray? This question compels us to delve deeper into the lives of these maritime marauders. The truth is, many of these individuals were driven to piracy by harsh social and economic circumstances. The disparity between the rich and the poor, along with limited opportunities, made piracy an attractive option for many. In the 17th and 18th centuries, the age of piracy, the world was a place of stark social and economic contrasts. The rich enjoyed lavish lifestyles while the poor were left to toil away. Opportunities for advancement were scarce, especially for those born into poverty. For many, the prospect of a pirate's life with the promise of shared wealth and a semblance of democracy was too enticing to resist. This brings us to an intriguing aspect of pirate life, the concept of pirate democracy. Imagine a ship where power wasn't held by a single captain, but was shared amongst the crew. This wasn't a utopian dream, but a reality on many pirate vessels. Pirate crews operated under a system of shared power where decisions were made collectively. The spoils of their exploits were also divided equally among them. A pirate's life wasn't just about plundering wealth, it was also about sharing it. This democratic system was a stark contrast to the rigid hierarchies of the time. Pirates challenged the class system that kept the rich rich and the poor poor. They sought freedom not just from the laws of the land, but also from societal norms. They were rebels fighting against the status quo, seeking a life of liberty on the high seas. Turns out pirates were not just treasure hunters, but society's early rebels, fighting against the class system and seeking freedom on the high seas. They were miscreants to some, misunderstood to others, but undeniably they were a symbol of defiance and a beacon of freedom in a world bound by chains of inequality. So, what was a day in the life of a pirate really like? You might picture swashbuckling adventures and buried treasure, but the reality was a little less romantic. Let's start with the dawn. Waking up wasn't to the sound of a gentle ocean lullaby, but rather a harsh bell toll. The pirates would scramble to their duties, from swabbing the decks to checking the sails. Breakfast was far from a lavish feast. It was more likely a hearty helping of hardtack, a type of biscuit so tough it could chip a tooth, washed down with a swig of grog, a mix of watered-down rum, lemon, and sugar. And hygiene, well, let's just say it wasn't a pirate's top priority. Fresh water was precious, saved for drinking and cooking, not for bathing, and dental care, a luxury few could afford. Pirates often suffered from tooth decay, leading to the infamous pirate grin. As for pastimes, pirates found joy in the simplest of pleasures. They'd play games like dice and cards, sing shanties, and share tales of their exploits. When they weren't busy maintaining the ship, or planning their next raid, of course. But it wasn't all fun and games. 
the pirate code was a strict one, and punishments for breaking it were severe. From marooning, a fate of being left alone on a deserted island, to walking the plank, the pirate life was one of constant danger. Pirates also lived by a code of superstitions and rituals. They believed that whistling could summon a storm, that seeing a dolphin was good luck, and that it was bad luck to start a voyage on a Friday. These beliefs, however irrational they may seem, guided their lives at sea. So there you have it, life on a pirate ship was far from the glamorous adventure we often imagine. Filled with hardship, danger, and a fair share of rum. A pirate's life indeed. But amidst all the peril and plunder, could there be room for romance, you might ask? Well, the high seas were not just filled with cutlasses and treasure chests, they also held tales of love and passion. Let's take a journey back to the early 18th century and meet the fiery Anne Bonny and the flamboyant Calico Jack Rackham. Bonny, a woman who had left her husband to embrace the pirate's life, fell in love with the charismatic Jack. Their love story was no secret, and they sailed together, causing havoc and stealing hearts, not just treasure. Their passionate affair was so intense that when Jack's ship was finally captured and he was sentenced to death, Bonnie's last words to him were, had you fought like a man, you need not have been hanged like a dog. Now, if that isn't love on a pirate ship, I don't know what is, but their story is not an isolated one. The high seas were more progressive than you might think, with women taking on roles not just as lovers but as leaders. Another woman of note is Mary Reed, who disguised herself as a man to join the pirate ranks. Her secret was only revealed when she fell in love with a fellow pirate. Women like Bonnie and Reed were not mere passengers in pirate society. They were active participants, leaders, fighters, and lovers. They were respected and feared in equal measure, and their stories are a testament to the unexpected complexities of pirate life. So, while love might not have been the main pursuit for most pirates, it seems that even the hardened hearts of these buccaneers could be touched by Cupid's arrow. The tales of Anne Bonny and Calico Jack, Mary Red and her unnamed lover, remind us that beneath the skull and crossbones, there were hearts that beat not just for gold and glory, but also for love. So while love was not a pirate's main pursuit, it seems even the hardened hearts of buccaneers could be touched by Cupid's arrow. But what happened to these swashbuckling sea dogs? Did they all meet a watery grave? As we voyage into the 18th century, the golden age of piracy began to ebb away. The seas became less welcoming to these maritime marauders. The world's naval powers began to expand their patrols, their ships cutting through the waves like sharp blades, bringing an end to the reign of pirates. It was as if the sea itself had turned against them. Once a safe haven, it became their biggest foe, with naval ships lurking in every shadow. The life of a pirate became increasingly perilous, with the risk of capture and punishment hanging over their heads like a dark storm cloud. And the punishments? Oh, they were harsh. They weren't just a slap on the wrist. They were meant to send a chilling message to anyone who dared to live the pirate's life. A pirate's end was often at the gallows, their last sight, a jeering crowd, their last sound, the creaking of the rope. But as the sun set on the era of real pirates, it rose on their enduring legacy. Pirates may have been outlaws, but they captured the imagination of the world, their stories, their adventures, their rebellious spirit. It all became part of our culture. They became the heroes and villains of countless books, the stars of blockbuster movies, the inspiration for fashion trends, and even the mascots of sports teams. From Treasure Island to Pirates of the Caribbean, from the Jolly Roger flown at football games to the pirate-inspired outfits at fashion weeks, the influence of pirates is everywhere. It's in the way we talk on Talk Like a Pirate Day. It's in the way we search for adventure and treasure in video games. While the era of pirates may have ended, their spirit of adventure, rebellion, and freedom continues to captivate us even today.